Hey, how's it going? I just wanted to record a quick tutorial. I found a new way to sample in color that really works nicely with the way I like to organize my projects. And I haven't seen this shared around a lot about um, sort of a natural way to work with color inside of ZBrush. I usually do most of my real texturing inside of Substance Painter. Um, but I do have been doing the 3D character workshop with Shane Olson. Um, you should definitely check it out. He is an awesome teacher and that's definitely where most of my UI, I've kind of customized it since then, but most of my UI has come from taking that class with him. And so <clears throat> in that class, I like to, yeah, like you need to paint your objects um, as you go, as your models, you know, to help you be able to better see what, what you're doing and sort of how your colors are going to represent close to your reference. And so I found working with color in ZBrush to be unintuitive. And so this is the way you do it, right? Like you pick a color and all right, so I want to work in the red family. This is like about as red primary as you can get, but I don't understand what, why is, you know, this sort of like, let's call this like a middle, like, a actual purple color not a red violet or blue violet why is that opposite this sort of like cyan green versus this there's no like snapping to colors like you're really just like is this more red is this more magenta and i just find that a really obnoxious way to work right if i want to match this red or this red work using this interface all right, great. So I'm going to find something red and then I'm going to kind of eyeball it. And then within that, I have to try and like figure out if this color is, you know, is it more saturated, less saturated? And so one of the problems with this color wheel and trying to match this color to something from my image is that also all colors are in context, right? Like my perception of this red is going to be changed by what's around it. So, you know, it's a little bit of color theory but you know like trying to search for one red in a sea of reds this is incredibly difficult if i'm trying to like match this on the first go i'm like oh nope that's not quite right you know what is wrong with this i'm going to say it's a little bit darker i'm going to say that it's also a little bit closer to like an actual red and so i'm playing this game of trying to match these colors and i don't like working that way and so you know there are things you can do inside of zbrush natively, right? So the way to sample colors off of um, the UI, off of the spotlight image, off of your existing model is just by hitting C. So I can go in here, select my little color, and I can paint this back in. And so that's really nice, right? Like as long as the color that I want is already somewhere in the UI or on top of my, you know, on my UI or on my model, I'm good to go. And that's cool. So if I want to sample from Spotlight, I can't just hit C um, to sample it off of here. And I can't, you know, left mouse button and drag it over here. It works here, it works on the UI, but it doesn't work directly on Spotlight. So I have to hit Z to activate Spotlight again. And then, you know, even to get an, a single image into Spotlight is a pain, right? You got to go to texture, you got to import the texture, then you got to load the texture, then you got to add it to Spotlight, and then you got to go to brush, and then you got to turn off your Spotlight projection, otherwise you won't be able to paint. And so, great, I can pull a color from here. So I want, this is the color I want. Great, I've got it in here. I'll pay, go to paint again. That's not going to work. I have to hit Z again to get rid of that radial dial so that I can come back and paint. But I do have the color, right? So at least I have the color. It's a way to get stuff in there. Um, and so I found a really nice way of working. Um, and it's not perfect, but it's definitely an improvement. So, you know, if I haven't mentioned already. So, yeah, Pure Ref is how I like to stay organized in all my other projects. And I really like being able to sample from, you know, whatever image I have on my screen wherever it is. And so with the default sampling inside of UI in ZBrush, I can only sample inside of things that are within the UI. And so, you know, I got to hit Z if I want to sample off of spotlight images. And so I can't, I'll show you, if I just go over here and hit C on top of my, you know, it doesn't register anything outside of or on my other monitor. And so 
that kind of sucks, right? Like I want to be able, I don't want to have to load in a bunch of different images into ZBrush to be able to, you know, work sort of the way that I like to work. That's a little bit more intuitive, right? I want to have a whole project inside of Pure Ref and I want to be able to sample th colors when and where I want and be as flexible and fluid and be able to iterate as much and as often as possible. And so what I did find is cool is there's this Z color. And so let me pull that onto this window. And so what's cool is that Z color actually does that. Z color, sure, you can sample directly off of your, you know, your model. And so that's something interesting to think about is that when I'm sampling colors from here um, and I'm hitting C, right, this will bring up like the exact color as it is on the model, right? The, the sort of like base diffuse color. And so I don't have to worry about matching it. However, this picks up directly the pixel color that's underneath your mouse. So if I click the left mouse button and I drag it over here, you know, this value, because it's towards the edge, is going to be darker than a value that's here in the middle of the face. So if I use this value to paint over here, it's going to look, well, it's going to look weird. So in order to send that value back over there, I have to hit set color and that sends the value down. And so if you'll notice, you know, this is not the color that I thought it was. And so it's two different ways of working. If I want the sort of, um, you know, raw diffuse value, the actual value color that exists all over the image, this doesn't regard, respect the lighting. You know, this is the good way to work. Once I already have the, have the color here in the, the interface, I can use that. And so what's nice is that I can, you know, use this for working inside of Pure Ref. And so if I go he over here, I click left mouse button, I go over to this green, I can or this red, I can sample directly off of it, I hit set color, and then I can paint away. And so that's a nice way to bring in sort of my colors that exist here in Pure Ref or on another monitor, on a you know, inside of Photoshop still, or, you know, pulling from Google or whatever. So that way we can go from, you know, Mr. Frown hitting C to sample like the direct image. And then I want to pull, make a little smiley face using, you know, let's say this brown right here. And so all to do is hit left mouse button from top or bottom, doesn't matter. And drag it over here, hit set color, send that color back. And then we've got a smiley face using this color brown. So yeah, that's really helpful. So now that color brown exists in the, in the interface. And if I want to go back to black, I can, you know, work in here. And if I want to go back to red, I can work in here. And if I need a sample again, I can go in and use the Z color plugin. So yeah, that's a really great way and really helps me work um, a little bit more fluidly with the color workflow. And it certainly isn't perfect, but it's definitely a big improvement over trying to load an image in or trying to come in here and use this sort of odd way of um, working with color. I really do prefer, and maybe there is a, a nicer way to work with just sort of like HSV values. I feel like if I'm trying to track down and it track down an actual value, I really like to use work with the hue, work with the saturation, work with the value as independent sliders, like you're trying to match inside of Photoshop. And um, maybe that's somewhere in the, in the ZBrush interface and I haven't found it yet, but yeah, I hope this is helpful to y'all. Um, hope y'all have a good one. Take care.